Welcome everybody, my name is Thomas Trautsch and today we are talking about Proposition 13 of Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz's work on the arithmetic quadrature of the circle, parabola and hyperbola. And Proposition 13 is to be understood basically as an extension of Propos uh, Proposition 12, where Leibniz establishes a relationship between the half of the square of the radius of the circle and the cycloid segment. And he says that these areas are equal. And this is what we are going to prove now. So first of all, the uh, precondition is that you have the ordinate creating those two uh, figures is uh, located exactly at the center point of the circle. And uh, if you have uh, these made up these partial areas, you can draw out uh, relationships. So you have, for instance, uh, the figure of a cycloid figure, <coughs> which is basically bound by the cycloid curve itself up to the very point E, where the ordinate from the center point of the circle intersects with the cycloid curve. And then up from the point D back to uh, the apex point A again. And this uh, cycloid figure curve is basically composed of three partial areas, namely the uh, triangle ADL, which is the half of the square of the radius of this uh, circle, then the triangle ALE, and the cycloid segment. And this is the first uh, determination we are making. Then we make a second determination the very same uh, cycloid figure can be composed of two different areas, namely the quarter circle itself and what we earlier on in Proposition 12 called the cycloid retort, which is bound by the cycloid curve itself, the bounding uh, ordinate and the uh, circular arc. And from Proposition we actually established a relationship between the cycloid uh, retort and the cycloid segment. So we know from Proposition 12 that the cycloid retort is exactly the double of the cycloid segment. And we keep this in mind and proceed to the next determination. And the next determination is saying that uh, the triangle ALE, which is shown in red here, is actually uh, the very same area as the quarter circle itself. And how this is going to come about, uh, we're going to show in the next step. Because we know from Proposition 12 that the distance between L and E exactly constitutes the uh, arc length of the quarter circle, because this is the very point where point A would end up to when you roll the circle exactly such that it is uh, in its final state being rotated by 90 degrees, and this is constituting point A. And hence this distance must be equal <coughs> to the distance or to the length of the uh, arc of the quarter circle in this case. And the second very interesting uh, characteristic of this triangle is that it's, where if you consider LE the baseline, the height of this triangle is exactly the radius of the circle. And hence, according to Archimedes, this uh, triangle, which we now transformed into a right angular triangle, must be exactly the area of the quarter circle because it's composed, composed of the half of the product of uh, the radius times the arc length of the quarter circle. And hence, we can make this determination um, that the sum of these uh, partial areas, which we established in the first determination, can also be expressed as the area of the quarter circle or the triangle uh, ALE plus twice the size of the segment because we know 
that the uh, double of the segment is exactly um, the area of the cycloid retort. And we also know just from the previous uh, determination that this triangle, ALE, <coughs> is exactly uh, the area of the quarter circle. So if you uh, add the area of the quarter circle plus uh, the uh, area of the cycloid retort, you also get the composition of the entire uh, cycloid figure. So this is basically substituting what we found out via these determinations into the previous uh, equation. And we get this little equation. And when you look at this equation, <clears throat> you see that you can eliminate some terms. You can eliminate ALE because it's standing on both sides. And you can eliminate uh, the cycloid segment once uh, because it's also available on both sides of the equation. And if you eliminate those terms, you end up with a statement which is saying that the uh, half of the square of the radius of the circle, namely the triangle ADL, is equal to the segment. And this is how I proved, based on the relationship of the resecting figure, the cyclo and its relationship to the cycloid retort, and a little help of the uh, findings of uh, Archimedes, that these two areas are actually equal. And one more note I would like to add here, if you watched all the previous propositions, you may probably have noticed that the uh, Leibniz does not actually uh, handle a lot of uh, formulas and a lot of uh, difficult calculations, but he rather is communicating uh, principles and then he's drawing out the relationships between uh, various areas and uh, various figures. And this is the way a real scientist actually proceeds, trying to uh, establish principles and trying to show principles. And what we see here as a planar uh, construction of geometric figures is actually just an effect of principles. And um, that is uh, very different to uh, what Newton did, because uh, Newton was uh, pretty much a formula guy who was not very uh, keen or uh, he was sort of uh, denying that uh, there is a use in making hypotheses. And uh, hence, he was not getting as far with uh, his work on the calculus as Leibniz actually did. So this is concluding the part where Leibniz is uh, basically showing some use cases for the principle of the resecting figure and that uh, it is useful to draw some very interesting uh, relationship and principles from it also based on uh, other curves, not only the circular curve. And uh, in the next propositions, uh, he is making now the transition from the circular curve to uh, other uh, curves, which he calls uh, analytical curves. And this is going to be very interesting because uh, from this very part, we are now entering in the phase which is becoming important if you are interested in how this uh, notation for uh, using the calculus in mathematics on algebraic functions, how that actually came about. And this is something uh, not a lot of people get to know in school when they learn about the calculus. They only get the rules at hand, but they rarely know how these rules actually came about. And this is what we are going to explore as well as a byproduct of Leibniz's work on this uh, arithmetic quadrature of the circle, parabola and hyperbola. And it's going to be very interesting. So hence, stay tuned and uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.